In this video, I'm going to reveal my secrets to planning and hosting a dinner party that'll make it much more enjoyable. I love hosting dinner parties, and with the holidays around the corner, I'm sure all of you are gathering with friends and family over good food. As wonderful as that sounds, hosting people can be stressful sometimes. Give your guests enough notice. I don't know about you, but I like knowing way ahead in advance how many people I'm cooking for. To ensure that, I invite my guests at least two weeks before the party. Now, some parties are last minute and you can't give your guests a two week notice, but I make sure that I invite my guests at least three days before the party to avoid last minute stress. This also gives me the opportunity to ask my guests about their preferences. It's not necessary to cook what your guests prefer. However, it's a thoughtful gesture and goes a long way. But trust me, there have been many times that I've cooked whatever I wanted to and my guests have thoroughly enjoyed themselves. Refrain from alaminu dishes. Alaminu dishes are dishes that are cooked right before they're served. Fried dishes, for example, would fall into this category. I refrain from including these dishes in my menu because one, then I'll be spending most of my time in the kitchen during the dinner party rather than with my guests. And two, if things don't go to plan, you're going to be serving less food than you plan for and nobody wants that. I pick dishes that can be prepped ahead of time and cooked before the guest's arrival. That way, I spend maximum time with my guests and minimum time in the kitchen. Pick dishes that are easier to cook in large quantities. Some dishes are easier to cook in large quantities while others aren't. I pick dishes that are easier to cook in bulk. Indian food is incomplete without rice or bread. I gravitate towards rice because one, it's easy to cook for a large number of people, and two, there is very little active time involved during the cooking process. Make the dessert the day before. I like to make a dessert that's served chilled the day before the dinner party. This ensures that I don't have to think about dessert on the day of. The idea is to minimize the number of things that I have to do on the day of the dinner party. It also means that when it's time to serve the dessert, all I need to do is share it with my guests. Don't leave grocery shopping to the day of. I have done this countless times and regretted it every time. Now, sometimes you just can't avoid it and that's okay. However, some of these steps help ensure that you enjoy yourself during the planning process of the dinner party. Not having to leave the house on the day of the dinner party means that you can focus on getting your house ready, preparing the dishes, and have some breathing room to have a glass of wine before your guests arrive. Take stock of the tableware that you own. Now, if you have a cupboard full of different varieties of tableware, then this one's not for you, and I'm envious of you. However, if you don't, then it's important to know what tableware you have and what dishes you're serving so that you don't end up in a last minute situation where your dish does not work with the tableware that you own. Not having to improvise minutes before your guests arrive makes it a lot less frantic. Before my guests arrive, I make sure I lay out my platter full of appetizers, snacks, and my glassware. I ensure that my drinks are appropriately chilled, just so when my guests arrive, they are welcomed with an abundance of food and drinks. It also means that I don't have to jump into entertaining mode immediately, and I can continue with any last minute prep that's required before dinner is served. Course out your meal. Now, this one depends on what you're actually serving, but I find that it makes the process of serving your guests much easier. This means that while my guests are finishing their appetizers, I finish the last minute prep on my mains and bring them out as soon as they're done. After main course, I offer some after dinner beverages and while my guests are enjoying those, I clear the table and set things up for dessert. Hosting a dinner party is hard work, but these steps ensure that you enjoy the process along the way. Seeing your friends and family have a wonderful evening over the food and drinks that you've prepared is the most rewarding feeling. That's why, even though it's hard, I would host a dinner party over and over again.
Like the video and subscribe to my channel if you want to dive into the depths of Indian cuisine and culture. Tell me about the best and worst dinner parties you've hosted and attended. Leave a comment below and let me know.